everybody, my name is Chris and this will be my review for Godzilla minus one. So with Godzilla minus one, we found the story of a Japanese Kamisaki pilot who encounters Godzilla putting him on a several years path to try and take down the beast and save his city. Now my first introduction to Godzilla was the Roland Emmerich Godzilla movie. I know, not a very good movie. But I do have my thoughts part for that movie and growing up I watched my fair share of random Toho movies here and there that also entertained me. But even when it came to like the big American Godzilla movies, I think they they haven't done justice to this character. Uh I mean I think the Godzilla is a cool badass monster i'm not going to deny how popular he is but i have yet to see a godzilla movie that really spoke to me they really made me go whoa so when it came to godzilla minus one i just kind of uh, wanted to see godzilla do what he always does you know a uh, badass things a tummy breath some interesting side story really nothing more than that and having sit down and watch this movie and experience this movie it blew all my expectations off the water Godzilla minus one is not just one of the best Toho Japan made Godzilla movies it is one of the best Godzilla films of all of them this is just a Godzilla movie that I was just glued to the beginning to the end and by the time the credits roll i just had a big smile on my face there's so much to laugh about this movie and it's done so wonderfully it's starting off with the human surplus story in here that always seems to be like the drawback to allow the americans godzilla movie they just never seems to find a story a human character or, or a soldier or whatever to be like i'm generally glued to and understand why this character should be all connected to this gigantic beast terrorizing the city but with Godzilla minus one they tell a really compelling and downright beautiful story about this Japanese pilot who was supposed to be a Kamasaki pilot a person whose whole job is just to gain a plane and crash and sacrifice himself for the world and we're clearly because he's the main character he chickens out and from that position and he's a coward he doesn't want to do it and that ends up becoming kind of a, the whole basis and themes of the entire movie getting over that guilt that trauma and the sacrifices you're willing to make for the people you love and just the way it's all told and connected to Godzilla and so simply it's just perfect while Godzilla minus one has a a lot i mean like a lot of Godzilla action the moments you spend with the characters the human on screen you just try to live their life overcome certain struggles completely I was completely invested. I, I was not bored with them. I was not waiting for the next uh, Godzilla appearances. I fully care about this dysfunctional and our family trying to make it to another Godzilla attack. While I myself didn't come to tears by the some of the moments in the story, there were things that put out on my heartstrings and got me a little emotional and that's just awesome they they will be they were able to do that with this movie and this story another big thing you're gonna see uh, talk about and um, people's mind they just blew their minds away is the effects on this movie i mean the visuals of this movie Best Godzilla has ever looked, at least in my opinion. Godzilla we have on screen here and the visuals surrounding him, or oh, they put a lot of the American stuff to shame. <laughs> and I love the way Godzilla looks in the most recent Masterverse entries but there's something completely different about this Godzilla and the way he moves about on screen the close-ups on the angry eyes and face his makes it this is a terrifying Godzilla this is a Godzilla that every time he show up a scream a uh, clench up and worrying about the characters who is going 
to die and what's about to happen. This is this thing is unstoppable. And I think the thing that blew people's mind the most is looking like the budget of this movie because this movie was made on a $50 million budget. Again, $50 million budget that put into perspective for you like the Michael Myers Halloween movies though are made for 20 to $25 million. And look at what they did with $50 million. And I don't know what kind of a uh, Japanese accountant are uh, running Toho or what they're doing, but we need to get some of them over here and mess with what's happening in our Hollywood because cause you could spend around $100 million, $200 million and adopt the movie will look as grand and as beautiful as Godzilla minus one here. There are generally times where it's just staring at the face of Godzilla and hovering over the screen is doing is chaos. You like that's a real creature that there's somebody put off a camera and film and action Godzilla because Holy crap, this looks uh, 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 unbelievable. This looks so good. And, you know, to me, the real lesson in here from what I understand, if I've been really about this movie, is this film has been production since 2019. So I'm assuming that's like when the virtual effects and CGI work started. That's really the key, whether you're spending $1 million on an action film to a $100 million. If that $100 million movie only gives the VFS team six months to complete their work and then release it in theater, that $100 million is it going to do jack for the visuals as opposed to a film that's going to spend a lot less but give the creative team time to polish and render and clean up those effects. It makes a whole world of a difference. But again, putting aside the visuals and the stunning beautiful nature of that, there's so many things about Godzilla Minus One that blends in modern action where it's like the visuals in terms of like the camera work following a plane in the sky or the way Godzilla is destroying a city it feels very modern but at the same time uh, the film has the aesthetic of like the original old, old Toho movies which I think is such a, an accomplishment that you can blend in those two eras of Godzilla into one so it's so cool I just can't stop gushing about how badass the atomic breath scene is and the things they do with Godzilla uh, spine in here along with like the musical score in here so of the use of the classic Godzilla thing it just it, it really sets me Cheers, man. Now, I think like the only drawback to this movie for a lot of people to experience this is that this movie is in fact if you go and pay a ticket to watch it in theaters, you're reading subtitles the entire time. And I know that's not everybody's cup of tea, but this movie is so worth reading all those subtitles and going to the experience the movie like you just forget about the five minima it's just naturally enjoying what an amazing work this is and i mean when Godzilla is doing action you don't need subtitles there you're just enjoying the amazing spectacle on screen this will be my favorite Godzilla movie ever made and put some real respect on the character and I'm excited to see more of this I think what they accomplished here with the character and the story and the ritual face is such a huge accomplishment and especially from Toho like the, the, this is the, the crown jewel so I'm very excited about that and and to see what is next, what is the next Godzilla movie from, uh, from Toho. Also, I'm excited for the Masterverse here and Godzilla vs. Calm. But this was just a phenomenal experience and really put Godzilla on a whole new level. So I highly recommend you watch it. Uh, 
like I say, it's uh, I think the only drawback of this movie for some people could be that they you has like to read the subtitles. Other than that, it, it, but just go and and experience this because it's an amazing movie. So that's my review for Godzilla minus one. If you like this video, hit the like button. Consider subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.